Okay, the error speed indicator. Remember, error speed is your friend. <laughs> yeah, it is. So anyhow, when you look at the air speed indicator, there's all sorts of colors. You see green, you see white, you see yellow, you see red. Then you got the little needle that obviously is the indicator itself. Then above it, you got a thing that says maneuvering speed 97 knots. Interesting enough, there is no marking. Notice at 97 knots, there is no marking at 97. I'll explain that in a second. But anyhow, what these different colors mean on the air speed indicator, let's start at the big one, red. If you go beyond red, that's called never exceed speed. If you go beyond that, there's no guarantee that the structural integrity of this airplane is going to remain without something failing. So go above the red line, never exceed speed, that's test pilot land. Don't go there. The yellow arc right in here, what that is, is, is a cautionary area that you can only use in smooth air. I don't particularly ever fly this airplane in the yellow arc. I just don't like to. I just like to maintain, in the, I just like staying in the green arc all the time. So you have cautionary, red line, never exceed, yellow line, cautionary, you know, cautionary, I don't like flying around that. Green arc, normal operating, that's where I like to be. Green arc, it goes all the way up here to the top of the, you know, it starts at the, goes all the way to the yellow arc, but it starts way down here and you're wondering, hey man, why does this thing start way down here like at 47 knots? What's significant? about the bottom of that green arc at 47 knots. Well, the significance is, is that, that bottom of the green arc says that when you're flying, that there's airplane, when it's fully loaded with a maximum forward CG, fully loaded, maximum forward CG, and forward CG just means the weight's towards the front of the airplane, not towards the back. So max gross weight, fully loaded, this airplane will stall, meaning the wing will quit flying, at 47 knots. So that's what that means. So if you're a fully loaded airplane and you have a forward center of gravity, that's where that airplane is going to stall. So now all of a sudden you're like, hey, there's this white arc. Cool. What's that mean? Well, this gives you two different bits of information here. One is the top of the white arc, kind of interesting. You can see it right there. And what the top of the white arc is, is the airplane has to be slowed because normally it's cruising up in this zone, right? Cruise speeds around here, you might be descending around 120. But when you're coming in for a land, the top of the white arc, that's the fastest you can go before you can extend the flaps. Any faster and you start damaging flap tracks. So that is what the top of the white arc means. That's f maximum flap extension speed. And then when you get to the bottom of the white arc, guess what that means? Stall speed with the flaps out. So when this, when you're max gross weight with a forward center, gra forward center of gravity, this is where that airplane will stall. It looks like, uh, you know, around 42 knots, 41 knots, right? So the two words associated with stall speeds with flaps in different configuration, and the configuration of a flap means either they're up or they're down. Because you hear configuration a lot, and you're like, ooh, what's that mean? It means flaps are up, flaps are down. Airplanes that have landing gear, let gears up, gears down. Configured for the approach. Con airplanes configured for landing. That's what that word configured means. So when we're at full flaps and we're coming in for a landing, that's a configuration of full flaps in this airplane because the gear is welded on this airplane. It doesn't go up and down. But when the flaps are extended and we're landing and that's a stall speed, that's bottom of the white, bottom of the white arc stall speed is called VSO. And that's stalling speed in the landing configuration. Again, bottom of the white arc, bottom of the white arc, VSO, stalling speed in the landing configuration. Because remember, the white arc's the flap arc, right? So are you looking at the bottom of the white arc? Because it's a flap arc, bottom of it, VSO. And you can think in the terms of VSO, O being, think of landing gear down, you know, because it's kind of like the shape of an O. So when you think O, O, the wheels are down, and O, the flaps are out. So VSO, O, the flaps are out, O, the wheels are down, right? That's where that's going to stall. The bottom of the green arc, now they name that something different. They just call that VS1. So stalling with flaps up, stall speed of the flaps up, max gross weight, all the weight towards the forward, VS1, and that's stalling speed with flaps one. So anyhow, that's what's on the airspeed indicator. Pretty interesting stuff. Next, we're going to talk about maneuvering speed really quick. And this airplane has this thing that says maneuvering speed, 97 knots. Well, what does that mean? Well. When they designed this airplane, this, this airspeed of 97 knots is at maximum gross weight. Again, every, most of these numbers in the airplane have to do with when it's heaviest, right? And it makes sense because when's the airplane going to perform the worst is when it's fully loaded versus if it's just me flying and half tanks of gas, it's going to perform pretty good, right? So it's assuming that this airplane is fully loaded, that's what these speeds are. 
So what maneuvering speed refers to is it's a speed that you can that you can use one flight control either left to right, full forward or back, or full rudder either direction. It means that you can just use one of those controls all the way to its limits. And but it's one, it's not all, it's just one control surface. So it used to be people always got that confused thinking that you could manipulate the flight controls and go full forward and jam the right rudder all the way to the floor and that was fine but that is not the case it's one flight control ailerons rudder elevator so that's what this maneuvering speed is referenced for the reason you want to slow to maneuvering speed one is when we're going to practice maneuvers you're always going to hear i'm slowing the maneuvering speed when i'm flying by myself the maneuvering speed is a little bit slower with me on it because the airplane's a little bit lighter so we're going to be using a speed a little bit less than 97 knots you'd think that it would increase but it doesn't it actually goes lower so the speed that we're going to be using i think is around 89 knots is what we're going to use for our maneuvering speed when we're flying but when you hear in the maneuvers that we slow to maneuvering speed that's what that's talking about and the reason is is because we're doing maneuvers you never know if you might have to go full aileron or full rudder or full down or up elevator to get out of a, a situation like a stall or if the, you know, if the thing flips over on its back. For the most part, you're never going to have to do that, but that is why that is there. It's just saying that if you if below that speed and you move one flight control, it guarantees structural integrity of the aircraft anything above that speed and if you do a full deflection of any one of those controls you could damage structurally damage the aircraft so anyhow that's what that is so i'm pretty sure you have a pretty good grip on it now again green arc normal operating white arc flap operating yellow cautionary red is test pilot time so anyhow that's how all that works all right cool see ya